Welcome to the UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Brain Blast Series. My name is James Brewer, and I'm the director of the UC San Diego Department of Neurosciences and the Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I'm a professor of neurology, a clinical neurologist, and a brain imaging researcher. I'm pleased to present to you our virtual Brain Blast series. Each of the talks included in the series have been created by Shiley Marcos ADRC colleagues with expertise in brain aging research that focuses on prevention, detection, diagnosis, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Each of the experts featured in the series studies a unique aspect of brain aging and has developed a brief overview of their current research to highlight the state-of-the-art work that's going on here at UCSD and our center. We hope you'll take advantage of this free resource to learn more about the advances in brain aging, the importance of research, and the multitude of opportunities to get involved and participate in research studies. Hi, my name is Dr. Emily Reese. I'm an assistant project scientist in the UC San Diego Neurosciences Department. And today I have the pleasure of sharing with you an exciting new project um, that we're starting in collaboration with the UCSD Alzheimer's Disease Research Center that will be examining the role of the blood brain barrier in Alzheimer's disease. Now, current models of Alzheimer's disease posit that particular brain changes occur along a characteristic time course during Alzheimer's disease progression. Initially, the toxic proteins, known as amyloid and tau, accumulate around and within brain cells, and these deposits may occur a decade or more before symptoms appear. Next, structural changes occur in the brain that can be measured with the imaging technique magne magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. These changes include degeneration of the white matter connective pathways, along with the death of neurons, which manifest as brain shrinkage on MRI scans. Eventually, cognitive impairment begins with notable memory problems and ultimately the functional and behavioral changes that are characteristic of full-blown dementia emerge. However, there's growing consensus that this model of Alzheimer's disease is incomplete and there are critical pieces missing from this puzzle that will help to clarify how, when, and why Alzheimer's disease develops and progresses beyond just understanding which changes occur at what time points. Now, a major clue to understanding this puzzle is the fact that vascular dysfunction coexists with Alzheimer's disease in the majority of cases, estimated around 80% of Alzheimer's disease cases. Furthermore, vascular risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, obesity, or a physically inactive lifestyle are also very strong risk factors for dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. Now the blood-brain barrier is the primary interface between the blood vessels of the brain and the tissue of the brain. This interface is a protective membrane or sheath that surrounds the blood vessels and selectively regulates which substances can enter, enter or are removed from the brain. Now damage to the blood-brain barrier can allow substances such as toxins or immune or inflammatory factors to enter the brain. And conversely, it can prevent the healthy removal of detrimental substances such as those toxic proteins, amyloid, um, or other waste products. And together, uh, this damage to the blood-brain barrier can create a very dangerous environment for the brain. Recent studies over the past several years have shown that the blood-brain barrier becomes leaky or increases in permeability, uh, both with older age and in Alzheimer's disease. However, it's not yet clear how damage to the blood-brain barrier directly contributes to the pathological processes that we know uh, contribute to dementia. So the goal of our study is to better understand the role of the blood-brain barrier in the development and the progression of Alzheimer's disease, and specifically how it relates to other established markers uh, that we discussed, including the accumulation of the toxic proteins amyloid and tau, uh, structural brain degeneration, and ultimately cognitive problems. So to assess these, or to address these questions, um, we are enrolling participants age 60 and older who are either cognitively healthy or, or who are experiencing mild memory problems. Participants should be safe for MRI and have no history of kidney injury. The study protocol will involve two separate visits to the UC San Diego campus, 
The first visit uh, will involve a blood draw to make sure that you're safe and healthy for the MRI scan, along with a questionnaire about your health and lifestyle. Uh, the second visit to UCSD will involve a one-hour MRI scan with contrast, uh, which will allow us to both estimate blood-brain barrier integrity and to measure brain microstructure or the small scale structure of your brain. Now, uh, we have the great fortune of collaborating with two other uh, scientists at UCSD, Dr. James Brewer and Dr. Sarah Banks, who are conducting uh, concurrent studies using the brain imaging technique PET that will allow us to measure amyloid and tau accumulation in the brain. So while not required for participation in our study, it's highly encouraged uh, that participants co-enroll in um, our studies so that we can compare measures of blood-brain barrier leakage and microstructure to measures of protein accumulation. Now, what do we hope to understand from our study? First, we hope to clarify when the blood-brain barrier begins to show damage. Does it become leaky early on before structural changes occur or symptoms appear, or does it occur later in the disease? Second, how does it relate to other pathological markers in processes? Do regions of blood-brain barrier leakage correspond with areas of structural damage? Uh, does the blood-brain barrier become leaky in conjunction with or independent of uh, amyloid and tau accumulation. Ultimately, we hope that this study will help to clarify how Alzheimer's disease develops and progresses and that this info in information will allow clinicians to better treat uh, individuals with Alzheimer's disease. Um, so if you're interested in participating in our study, um, I encourage you to please contact the ADRC either by phone or email for more information. And with that, I'd like to thank all of the past and current ADRC study participants for your help in the fight against Alzheimer's disease. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation from our UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Virtual Brain Blast Series. Please look for other presentations in this series and share them with your communities. We hope that you'll also consider participating with, in brain research studies. We always have new opportunities for participation and are actively seeking individuals 65 and older without memory disorders, as well as those with a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, such as frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, and Parkinson's dementia, as well as others. We're also proud to have a bilingual, bicultural team who conduct studies, visits in Spanish. Your participation can make a real difference for future generations. Please click on the description below to complete the very brief survey about the presentation you just viewed. And for those who are interested and who live in San Diego, we'll be happy to contact you. Simply provide your contact information on the secure survey. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.